On today's ChurchTechCast.com screencast show, the basics of working with video in ProPresenter 6. Hi, and welcome again to another episode of the ChurchTechCast.com screencast show. This is the show where every week I help you use software that we use in the church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. I'm your host. I'd love for you to join the conversation, so just leave your questions or comments below the video. That's a great way to do it. So, I've been going through a series of just some of the basics, the fundamentals, but reviewing them in ProPresenter 6 now that it's available. So I thought, we'd head on over to my computer and take a look at some stuff you may know and some stuff maybe you've forgotten in ProPresenter 6. Come on. Okay, so here we are over in ProPresenter 6, and I've done a similar video on working with video in ProPresenter 5, but I thought that I would uh, reapproach this since there are uh, a few changes in ProPresenter six and some people are new to ProPresenter six and don't need to know how to do it all in ProPresenter five even though a lot of times it's very similar so here we are um, this is ProPresenter six as you might guess from the giveaway ProPresenter six in the upper left hand corner if you didn't recognize the interface as being different which i do but that's an aside so down here in the video and image bin which may or may not actually uh, show up on your computer. So up here there is a little button and that's a toggle. So that shows it or not shows it, not shows it. Anyway, um, so you go to video image bin and then you have some choices. You have your backgrounds, you have your foregrounds. Now the difference between these isn't that they play and sometimes they don't, uh, it's where they play. So a foreground video will play basically on the same layer as text. So we've got the text up here. If I went to a foreground video, that's going to replace the text. So let's do that. So that's one of my old videos. So if, on the other hand, I went to a vac background video, so let's click on this sample background video, and then I click on the text, the text goes over top of the background video. So if I click on a different background video, the background changes, but the text remains. So that's the difference. And, by the way, if I now go back to the same foreground video, it will replace everything. See, and so that's what it does. And I'm gonna click pause on that because I've actually got it playing on three screens. I've got over to my left, I have it set to show up on the preview or on the stage monitor screen. And then over on my right, I've got it set to show up on my main uh, output screen that I would send to the projector. But I'm at home. This isn't uh, the church's machine, this is mine. So I don't actually have the ProPresenter license there. So all that to say, that's the difference between a background and a foreground video. Now, you can actually put videos on the same layer as the text, but the video will, as you change from one slide to another, that will cause the video to stop playing. So, if we right-click on the slide and go to Edit Slide, and I click this little, looks like a piece of motion picture film, guess what, that's a movie. So, I can grab one of those, and let's see here. Um, let's see, what movie do I want to, oh, let's put up last week's screencast just for giggles. So 
This is last week's where I talked to, about the basics of working with text. So I select that. Okay, so here it worked. Um, now, from the standpoint of just the look of it, you might think, well, that's just like putting a background here. You can re rearrange these in whichever order you want and so forth. But keep in mind here, let's get out of this that while this looks like a background video, uh, let's see here, let's put this background up here because I can just drag it up there. Yeah, there we go. Wasn't holding my mouth right. Actually, the truth is you've got to click on it, hold it down for a second, and then move it like you're going to drag it. Um, if you do it too quickly, it just thinks you might be choosing it. So, this, I'll show you what happens when I play this one. So, that's playing. It looks like it's a background video, when in fact it's not, because when I click on the next set of lyrics, it's going to disappear. See, whereas this background video that's a legitimate background video, when I click on it and then I go to the next set of lyrics, it will not disappear even though there's nothing here. Watch. See? And if I go from a slide with a legitimate background on it to one that I put in it uh, by editing, it's going to be replaced. So watch this. See? So that replaces that. In, it, in fact, what it is, is it's on the same layer as the text, so it's actually just covering it up. I expect that what we're going to see is it's going to be back when I click on this one. Yep, so there you go. That's what's going on there, is this just covers up this. So I can make this smaller if I didn't want it to cover up completely, but just so you know what you're dealing with there. So let's go and uh, let's take a look at the, uh, some of the media properties that you can deal with. First off, I want you to take a look at this little backwards loopy arrow thing. That backwards loopy arrow thing means that this is set to loop. Backgrounds, tend to, you tend to want them to loop. So that's what I would tend to say is, should be your default. Foreground videos, on the other hand, now this is set as a uh, a smooth loop, a soft loop rather. What I would tend to want it to do though is stop. So I play the video through and it stops. That's what you would tend to want to do on a foreground video. Another thing I want to show you down here is this little icon right here. This is looks like a here let me actually make it bigger okay so this looks like a slate with the play button on it whereas this one just looks like uh, an image and a piece of film the image and the piece of film is a background the slate with the play button is a foreground and if you've forgotten which is which you can look over here foreground slate with the play button background still with a piece of film. So at any time you can look up and I can tell, oh, this is a foreground video. I mean, this is a background video. Even if I had put a foreground video right next to it, so um, if I added a blank, here, let's do it this way. I put a blank slide in here, I add a background, so you, there's no text over that, there's no text over this. How do you tell the difference? The icon, right there and right there. So that's 
something basic for you to know as well. Now let's right click on any of these videos and let's click on Media Properties. When you click on Media Properties, you'll get some additional features that are really cool. So we'll let that come up here real quick. I'm gonna... Okay, so here we are in the uh, Media Inspector or the Media Properties tab, and we've got a few different choices here. First off, we've got the information where it tells us a lot about it. One thing we can do here is we can mark in and out points. So I could move it to like three seconds in and mark that as the in, and then go to right there and mark that as the out. That will, of course, cause problems uh, with the looping of it. So we would have to go here and change this to soft loop. Now we can stretch to fill, we can scale to fill, we can scale to fit. I'll talk about that a little bit later. We can flip it vertically. We can flip it horizontally. Horizontally isn't going to show much of a difference in this particular video, but you can tell a lot with vertically. So the uh, this video actually started out like this, and it also started off a different color. So let's change it back. Let's get rid of the color filter, and we notice that it's blue. So what I did was I added a color filter uh, to make it more green. There we go. And I flipped it vertically to put the triangles this way so that it had a Christmas effect. So that's one thing that you can do here is uh, you can change the colors, flip it horizontally and vertically. So going back, let's uh, take a look at some of these effects. I can adjust the color so I can change the hue. Yeah, let's make it like a purplish. Okay, I can change the saturation so it's black and white or it's really oversaturated. Let's do it like that. I can change the brightness so that it's very muted or washed out all the way to white. I can change the contrast. And look right here, I can double click in that and I can take them back to their original levels just by double clicking and and actually the original for the saturation is one. And the original for the contrast is also one. So, or I can just click reset if I wanted to put everything back the way that it is. So let's remove the adjust color, blur, you can change how blurry that is. So that could actually be pretty interesting. I'm gonna reset that. Color filter we've already played with. color invert. This is interesting. I'm not sure how often you'd use it. Here, let me remove that blur and now we're on the edge blur. And I have a couple of things I can play with. I can so This really seems to blur the edges and the radius is if I put that down to 0 it doesn't really blur anything, but if I put it all the way up to one, it blurs everything. So this might be good for like a vignetting kind of look. So this stays sharp in the middle and then it's blurred around the edges. That's pretty cool. Gray invert, inverts it with the gray. Heat signature, 
Ooh, yeah, I'm not going to use that very often. Sepia or sepia. I can use that to make it old-fashioned looking. So that is kind of some of these. And what's great in ProPresenter 6 is I have the ability to add more than one. So uh, let's see here. Let's do an edge blur. Let's remove the color invert. Let's remove the gray invert. But let's um, let's change the hue and add a color filter. So now with the adjust color, you can see how I actually have more control where I can adjust the hue and do a color filter which those might cancel each other out but I have control over the saturation as well which is nice so that's something that's really cool as well um, down here this tells me the transition between this and another video and I have access to all those and that is on a per video basis or I can do it down here. Okay, so I have a lot of choices and a lot of abilities. You should know that because ProPresenter operates in layers, it's layers, donkey! Uh, because it operates in layers, there are several layers of video that you can have. I've already shown you where you can have a background video, a video in the slide itself and a foreground video but you can also put a video in the props layer you can put uh, let's see here so I'm not gonna get into that this week but you can put one in the props layer you can um, I think you might even be able to put one in the mask layer so you can do some really cool things when you combine all those put together. Well, I hope that helped you. I hope that that was some information that maybe you'd forgotten or maybe you never knew. Maybe you're new to ProPresenter 6. If you like this content, I bet that you'll enjoy my email newsletter. So head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts. G-I-F-T-S. There I've got some free church tech gifts for you if you sign up for my free email newsletter. So that's a win-win. That's all about what I'm doing here and some more tips and tricks to help you uh, in your ministry. Also, if you'd like um, some more resources to help you be more effective to accomplish the same things more quickly or better, then head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash store and I've made all those resources with you in mind because I want you to save time that you can spend either doing ministry or with your family or maybe both. Until next time, head out and change eternity. This is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com.